Welcome to Timeless Truth with Pastor Jim Thomas, a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. As you're considering your plans for next year, we wanted to let you know TVC is embarking on a Journeys of Paul tour July 7 through 16, 2024. We'll step into history and walk where the Apostle Paul walked as we visit Philippi, Athens, Corinth, Ephesus, and many other meaningful locations. This tour will bring the scriptures to life with worship services and Bible studies with Pastor Jim. You can learn more at thevillagechapel.com slash tour. This week, we continue our study of the Gospel of Mark. Now, here's Jim. Hey folks, so glad you've joined me for our ongoing study of Mark's Gospel. Chapter 4 today, verses 21 to 34. Several more of the smaller parables of Jesus. We've just come through the parable of the sower, the seed, and the four types of soil. Those types of soil representing the receptivity of our own hearts and minds to the gospel, to the word preached, uh, to the, the good seed of the word of God as it's sown by the sower into our hearts and, and into our lives. And parables, as we've pointed out, seem to do two things according to Jesus. They seem to reveal and conceal. That sounds a little like a contradiction, but it's really more of a paradox. Um, that is, they these parables reveal to those who are eager to hear, those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, as Jesus would say, they reveal God's kingdom and God, the truth about uh, the gospel uh, to people. They conceal, though, to those folks who are the disposition of their heart is they're not interested. And we see those kinds of people already on display in the narrative of Mark's gospel. As we've come up to chapter four, we see there are some who are following Jesus eager to hear. And then there are others who are following Jesus who are eager to trap him in some way uh, into saying something they can some they can use to discredit him. And even uh, worse than that, we've seen now there are folk who are uh, mostly uh, the re, uh, religious establishment of the time who are th- feel threatened by Jesus. And they're actually looking for ways to destroy Jesus, uh, as we have seen earlier. So depending on what the disposition of your heart is toward Jesus, toward the scriptures, um, you'll find yourself either being, the parables will reveal something to you, or you'll just sit there and go, I don't get that. And the reason you don't get it is because the heart and the will and the mind are all working together. And for some people, if their will is set against belief, if they're a willful unbeliever, um, then they're going to get what they want. I don't know what could be more fair of God. And so here's Jesus using this brilliant ancient method. Um, and it, it continues to this day. People are constantly using stories and comparisons um, uh, in a similar kind of a way to make points. Others have called parables uh, earthly stories that make a heavenly point. So the, the earthly part of it might be that it's a, a, about some, some seed that's being sown or a farmer that's out sowing the seed or the soil itself. So lots of earthly things. There are images that certainly people in the first century would have gotten. And even uh, city dwellers like myself who hardly see any kind of activity you know, in the concrete, although sometimes some dandelion will find its way up through the concrete, won't it? Um, but even those of us that aren't used to agriculture or uh, an agricultural economy, we can still get the basic point of some of these uh, stories of Jesus. Eugene Peterson in his book, Reversed Thunder, which is kind of a, um, not a commentary, but it's sort of his his uh, musings, I wish, I, I guess I should say, on the book of Revelation said, Pharisees, the persons in the first century who knew the words of Scripture well, but heard the voice of God not at all, they separated the book from the human act of hearing, which would become believing, following, and loving. Printer's ink became embalming fluid. And I think that describes well the spiritual condition of the religious leaders who refused Jesus, who rejected Jesus. They did not have eyes to see or ears to hear. And so parables uh, concealed the message of the kingdom. They didn't get it uh, because they weren't interested in getting it. All right, let me read the text and then we'll um, maybe amplify uh, three short brief uh, points uh, for us this morning. Lord, thank you for your word that is living and active. Thank you for these very 
uh, earth, uh, earthy and and sort of stories that are so easy to understand. I pray that for each and every one of us this morning, you would help us to open our hearts, help us to open our minds and and uh, hear from you. Holy Spirit, um, quicken us, awaken us. Thank you for things like coffee and breakfast and driving and running and whatever else people might be doing while they're listening to this podcast. Uh, use all of that to awaken us spiritually above all that we might see Jesus, that you'd give us a clearer vision of your truth, a greater faith in your power, and a more confident assurance of your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So here we go. Um, Verse 21 of Mark chapter 4. He, Jesus, also said to them, and I'll remind you, it's the disciples now that he's talking to. He had been talking to some rather large crowds, but his disciples had, you know, gotten a little bit of a private audience with him after he had uh, taught the parable of the the sower, the seed, and the soils. And he was explaining it to him in uh, verses 13 through 20 and, and explaining it to the disciples who were eager to learn. And so he took the time to do that, to unfold that story for them a little bit. You're welcome to go back and read that or listen to the previous episode. But for now, Jesus is also saying to them, these disciples, he says this, is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed, isn't it to be put on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed and nothing concealed that will not be brought to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. And so when I hear that short parable there, the one about the lamp and whether it's to be put under a basket or under a bed, I always think back to that that old Sunday school song. Some of you will know it. Uh, I, I don't know if they sing it anymore these days, but you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And then the verses would be things like hide it under a bushel. Oh no, you know, everybody. And you know, as you're driving to work, um, you know, I'd get you to sing it with me, but um, I, I'm not sure that, that I will remember all the words, nor do I have a very good singing voice anymore. But anyway, he's making a great point here that there's a purpose for a lamp and it's not to be hidden away. It's not to be put under the bed. Of course, you don't want that. Um, And it's about revealing things and illuminating things. And then he also said in verse 24, pay attention to what you hear. By the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and more will be added to you. For whoever has more will be given to him. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Remember, this is all in the context of whether or not somebody is receiving as the word is preached, as the good seed of the word is sown, as the uh, uh, the light of revelation is, uh, is, is shining. Are they actually getting it or not? And if they're, if they're learning, if they're eager and they're open, the idea is that there will be more. You'll continue to progress in all of that. And he goes into yet another uh, parable right here in verse uh, 26. The kingdom of God is like this, he said. A man scatters seed on the ground. He sleeps and arises night and day. This seed sprouts and grows, although he doesn't know how. The soil produces a crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, and then the full grain on the head. As soon as the crop is ready, he sends for the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed that when sown upon the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on the ground. And when sown, it comes up and grows taller than all the garden plants and produces large branches so that the birds of the sky can nest in its shade. And so you can see these are all very similar in a way, these parables. Uh, There's lots of 
talk of seeds and talk of soil and, and talk of things like light. Of course, light is so important to the growth of a plant, to the germination of a seed, the warmth of the sun and, and, and all of that sort of thing. The, the, the kingdom of God is like the, the person who has scattered seed on the ground. And that does indeed happen throughout the kingdom of God. There are preachers, there are, uh, uh, in the New Testament, there were apostles. In the Old Testament, there were prophets. In the New Testament, additional prophets. And some, you know, some would say that anyone who is literally speaking forth uh, from the, the, the word of the Lord is speaking on behalf of God. And I think that in a general sense, that's very much true. The question is, are we receptive? Are we open? Are we learning from the Lord? And so this is really a great set of parables all about the kingdom, all about our receptivity to the kingdom and Jesus using parables. So what do what do these few parables here teach us this morning? Three gifts from God, three goals God has in giving them. I think that first one, verse 21 and 22, reminds us that the gift of light is for the goal of seeing. And I'll, I'll kind of use a rhythm like that in each of my little three points I want to make today as we take a look at this passage. There's a gift and then there's a goal that God has in giving that gift. So the gift of light is for the goal of seeing what are we doing with the light that God has given us. He's shining the light. Jesus came as the light of the world. Uh, Jesus also the word, the living word of God as John John's gospel chapter one reminds us. And so we have all of these beautiful images throughout the scriptures, you know, really from the beginning all the way to the end. God is constantly working at very, very hard to reveal himself to us. You see, God is really the subject of the entire Bible. He's the primary, the fundamental subject of the Bible. It's not you. It's not me. Um, and it's not just human history. It's not just humanity. It's really the scriptures are God revealing himself to us. And if I were to sum it up, uh, I like the I like the phrase, uh, the sentence that says, you know, God has been in pursuit of a people he can call his own. And in the person and work of Jesus, he has made it possible for you and for me to become one of his sons and daughters. Now, how do you respond to that good news, that great news declaration? It's so important for us. The gift of light is for the goal of seeing. The early church uh, father, uh, Augustine, uh, was once accosted by a heathen who showed him his idol and said, here's my God, where is thine? And Augustine supposedly replied, I cannot show you my God, not because there is no God to show, but because you have no eyes to see him. And uh, certainly picking up on what Jesus has said, uh, for him who has, you know, for, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Sinclair Ferguson in our own day and time, great Bible teacher, pastor of so many years, said the Spirit does not add new information about Jesus. He simply opens our eyes to see who he really is. If you are interested in seeing Jesus more clearly, in getting to know Jesus, in understanding this kingdom of heaven that we're reading about here in Mark's gospel, oh, just turn to him. Oh, just ask him. Just say, Lord, open our eyes, open my eyes that I might see. And I find uh, that for myself, even as many years as I've been a Christian, as many years as I've been reading through the Bible each year or teaching through the Bible like I've been for so many years, there's so much more for me to learn. I can tell each and every day as I go to it, it actually makes me more hungry for more of it. And that's a good thing. Um, it's, it's, it's almost as if feasting on it a little bit at a time increases my hunger for it. And I've, we've said that before about churches. We, we encourage people when they're looking for a church, look for a church not just that feeds you, but that actually makes you hungry for more of God, for more of the gospel, for more of the kingdom of heaven. And I pray that indeed the Village Chapel is one of those kinds of churches. Verses 23 to 25 um, the second little parable there moves from the idea of seeing and light. Um, now it's the gift of ears is for the goal of hearing. 
and I, I said I said this the other day, uh, if you were with me on previous episodes, but a lot of people just use their ears. Uh, it seems like they use them more for, um, you know, hanging jewelry on like earrings or whatever, or they, or they just use them for holding their glasses up, uh, not so much for listening or hearing. And I, I can hear, you know, some of you go, oh yeah, I know somebody like that, or maybe your kids are like that, or maybe your husband's like, whatever. Uh, there's lots of uh, people we might point to and say that they just aren't listening or they aren't hearing. But the gift of ears, it's, it's the goal is that we would hear. And uh, Jesus made that clear too when he said, for, he, for, for those who have ears to hear. Um, Peter Adam is a, an Australian uh, pastor, Bible teacher, prof- seminary professor. Had a great uh, interaction with him in uh, 2017. It's the only time I've ever met him. And um, some of the Village Chapel staff went up to a conference called the Gospel Coalition. I think it was, I think it was in Indianapolis that year or something. But uh, we were in in one of the dining halls and happened to bump into him, and he sat and chatted with us. and And uh, he was one of the one of the main speakers, and it just was so brilliant. First of all, he had an Australian accent, and what's not to love about that? But secondly, he was a man of great depth, and uh, and he was a gracious man, and uh, uh, still is to this day. Uh, but I just so locked into everything that he had to say; it just resonated. He was so full of grace, so full of truth. And it made me want to hear and to listen. Um, it drew me in. It was compelling. And he once said, hearing is a precious gift. He said, don't waste it on rubbish. <laughs> that's, that's so brilliantly said. How many voices are there vying for your attention today? Um, there'll be external voices and internal voices. The question is, what will you listen to? What will you pay attention to? You're, go- you're going to be shaped and formed today. You'll be shaped and formed by, oh, billboards that you drive by. You'll be shaped and formed by, you know, if you're listening to some kind of radio station of some kind or something online or watching some kind of television or going to a movie, whatever, whatever it is, there are lots of voices vying for your attention, seeking to shape and form you as a person. They want those voices Uh, cleverly, some of them very cleverly, are designed to persuade you to adopt a viewpoint or to be softened in some way towards something or maybe even more aggressively to become more uh, proactive in the direction of something else. The question is, will you be a thinking person of faith? Will you be careful? Because Jesus says, be careful about what you listen to right here. Watch what you listen to. Pay attention to what you hear. He said it right there, didn't he, in verse 24. Pay attention. Remain awake, alert. And that's so important. And even with this podcast, I encourage you, um, don't just listen mindlessly to what I say. Search the scriptures to see if these things are true. Hearing is a precious gift, as Peter Adams said. Don't waste it on rubbish. The gift of ears is for the goal of hearing. And thirdly and finally uh, today, verses 26 through 34, a little bit of a combination, maybe a mashup um, of a couple of uh, uh, parables, maybe as the CSB, which is the one I've read from today, by the way, the translation I'm using, um, they have it broken like this, the parable of the growing seed, Uh, where the the mystery is the man goes to sleep and in the morning he doesn't know how it happened, but oh, marvel of marvels, look what happened. And of course, that's all part of the creation design, you know, in nature. And it is a wonder, you know, we uh, we can work really, really hard sometimes. Those of you that have a garden, we can work really, really hard and think we've done it all right and it just doesn't work out somehow. The plant doesn't make it or whatever. So this is actually a really great parable because it reminds us of our, um, you know, uh, uh, on the human side of things anyway, how dependent we are on the divine, uh, how, how much we need God to actually see growth at all, even in our spiritual lives. And so it's the parable of the growing seed versus uh, 
uh, 26 through 29. And then the CSB has it broken into the parable of the mustard seed as a separate one. I kind of clump them together when I make this point that the gift of the kingdom is for the goal of multiplying faith, trust, wonder, and rest. This will be in the show notes. Uh, if you would like to see all of this written out or most of this written out, um, it'll be in the show notes. And if you can't find them on the platform you listen to or watch, you can certainly get them at thevillagechapel.com. Um, the gift of the kingdom, it is a gift. Jesus there says, how can we compare the kingdom of God? He's trying to get us, as he asks that question, it's not that Jesus doesn't know the answer. It's that he wants us to get to, th- to thinking about it ourselves. How can we begin to understand the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God? Um, And with what parable can we begin to describe it? And I like that too, because um, it is so huge, mysterious, like these two parables or the last passage uh, suggests to us. It's not only mysterious, but it's so mysterious that we can't define it, we humans anyway. We can only describe it. We can only, and that's the way God is as well, right? Um, it, it, he's just so massive. He's so he's infinite. We're finite. We're trying to understand the infinite. We can't do it because we're finite. So just by nature of who we are, we're never going to fully understand God. But we can describe Him, and we can use the words that He has given us to describe Him, and that's that's brilliant. We can know we're on track, starting to understand Him when we read His Word. And the gift of the kingdom is for the goal of multiplying and maturing faith, trust, wonder, and even that last little bit, rest. Uh, When the seed is sown on the ground, I love the way that verse 32 says it. And when sown, it comes up and grows taller than all the garden plants, this mustard seed tree or plant. And it produces large branches so that the birds of the sky can nest in its shade. So it's effective for other parts of God's creation as well. And I think that's indeed the way it is with the kingdom of heaven and with the gospel and with the good news. So Jesus is saying to all of us, remain watchful, be eager to follow Jesus, careful not to get distracted. Um, Watch what you listen to. Uh, Watch what you're looking at, what you're taking in. Uh, Watch your heart, the disposition of your heart toward the message of the kingdom, the message of the gospel, the message of Jesus and the hope of the gospel. Uh, Jesus is the light of the world. Look to him to interpret everything you experience in this world. The beauty, the wonder, as well as things like pain and suffering. Look to Jesus because we will see in the life of Jesus, in his uh, joy and in his suffering as well. There is so much for us there uh, to learn about who he is and who we are as people who have been chosen by him, called by him, and responded to his calling to follow him. And it changes the way we see everything, joy and suffering and everything in between. Be careful what you listen to today. There are many voices vying for your attention, seeking to influence you. And then uh, see yourself as a member of the kingdom of heaven today. Take note of the surprising advances of God's kindness toward you, the awe and wonder of his persistent expressions of love and compassion for you displayed, yes, most vividly in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Let me close with this quote from John Stott. Uh, He says, the greatest single secret of spiritual development lies in personal, humble, believing, obedient response to the word of God. It is as God speaks to us through his word that his warnings can bring us to conviction of sin his promises to assurance of forgiveness, and his commands to amendment of life. We live and grow by his word. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for your word. So grateful that it's living and active. Jesus, the creativity in your pedagogy, your teaching method just blows my mind sometimes. I'm so grateful. Holy Spirit, I pray that for myself and for all my brothers and sisters who are listening or watching this podcast today, that we will walk with you, that we will walk in the light as you are in the light, 
and that we will be listening for the voice, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Speak to us, speak through us, we pray. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen and amen. God bless you, have a great one. Thanks for listening to today's study. Take a moment to leave a review and share this episode with friends and family. You can stay connected by signing up for our newsletter or follow us on social media. At the Village Chapel, we believe God's word is unique in its source, timeless in its truth, broad in its reach, and transforming in its power. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com.